with the man. That's right. The president of the United States, our president. That's a pretty big land there. Tap, tap, tap He had an opportunity a little into the interview to ask him about the president's casual comments to the New Yorker about marijuana use. Here is part of that exchange. Roll it. The oceans would slow and the nation, the world, would heal. I don't believe that's it, and I might have it wrong on the, on the list. Quote number four, yeah, cut, cut four would be Obama's dopey answer, and I'm praying that will be right after Crowdhammer. All right, so it's a really dopey answer, and you say play on words. Yes, it is. But here the president is asked specifically about this, and, and what we will do is bring you what Jake Tap, Tap, Taparu had to say. Why is this important? Because I don't think marijuana is a joke. I realize there are good people on both sides of the debate regarding legalization. I'm completely against it. I think the cost-benefit analysis is about 13 to 1 when you talk about taxing it versus the social cost. It means more highway death, more addiction, more schizophrenia. It's not a good thing. I've, I've also seen people in my life through the years who've said, oh, it's no big deal, end up with a 15-year-old attitude toward life and not able to comprehend feelings or address other people in an adult way permanently in that mode. It's tragic. It's sad. So now Jake Tapper does ask the president about the drug and the casual comments he made to the New Yorker. David Remnick, the interview. Roll it. Or are you considering not making marijuana a Schedule One narcotic? Well, first of all, uh, what is and isn't a Schedule One narcotic is a job since I not, think it's the DEA it's, that it's, decides it's that. not it's not something by ourselves that we start changing no there are laws under uh, undergirding uh, those determinations Would you support that move? The, uh, but but the broader point uh, I stand by my belief based I think on the scientific evidence that uh, marijuana for casual users individual users is subject to abuse just like alcohol is uh, and should be treated as a public health problem and challenge. But as I said in the interview, my concern is when you end up having very heavy criminal uh, app, uh, penalties for individual users that have been applied unevenly uh, and in some cases uh, with a racial disparity. And I think that is a problem. Over the long term, what I believe is if we can deal with some of the criminal penalty issues, I got news for you. Uh, the president sees this through a racial lens. It's 1% as actually less than 1% when we're talking about people that are just users and individual users who, who are in prison for that. It, the, the claims, you got to go to the DEA website, and there's evidence also on the account of people going to jail and the racial disparity calling our, our justice system somehow it's racist and penalizes people of color more. Well, that's not true. Heather McDonald, Heather McDonald of the Manhattan Institute has done some outstanding work there. And she's addressed study, she lists three studies in a particular 10 page article she wrote about this. And so the president's just flat out wrong. He's also wrong about the DEA and the scheduling, uh, a schedule one narcotic. It's amazing, he says Congress has to do this, yet he'll make immigration law. I stop not gonna go just focus in right on it pet the cat silly hat there you go see i've been working on it thank you jesus now what he did was he said okay no that's holder's job well reason magazine and a whole host of others have said no not actually true and these are proponents of legalization mind you i will say this again there are good people on both sides of this debate. I am completely against it. And the idea of casual use and the addiction that may be not physical but mental, it is also people are smoking it for the effect. It stays in your system longer. The THC levels are higher. 
I just, this is not a road you want to go down. And I, I'm troubled by the president because if I went to part two of the answer, and I, I can't do that right now just for time, I'm going to bring this up on Monday. You also get his anti, the view of business that he has and the free market. He does not like it <laughs> at all. It's, it's, the entire answer illustrates that. But you've got a president who obviously sees things through a racial lens and he wants to make America better. I think all presidents want to do that. President Obama views America has been racist, uh, a racist justice system, disproportionately punishing those who don't deserve it, and he wants to correct that in any way possible. And if, if that's true, it can be addressed. You've got to make your case to the American people, go through Congress, that kind of thing. He'll go, go through executive order when he can. My only point is, when you look at the stats, it's not true. And it, it's the same thing he did with racial profiling. I have said from day one, I do not like, as you don't like, anybody who is a bigot, is a part of, who has prejudices and, and animus because of one's skin color. It's utterly asinine. And I, I like to actually make fun of those people. And, I, and to do that, I probably have to turn on the Jerry Springer show because that's where they all end up. I think the Jerry Springer show, if it ever came back in some form, not advocating watching it, just get the Westboro Baptist Church, the Black Panthers, and the KKK and have a fashion show. The Westboro Baptist Church, they can wear their stupid signs. But I digress. Now, that's the view he has. And it's sad because it automatically puts the onus on people that are enforcing the law and it casts it it's casting aspersions on on our justice system and there it, it also promotes the victim mentality talk more about that with our good friend Bruce Thornton next hour right now we keep moving President Obama using the power of the pen asked about the comments of the stop Act, which is stop this president, uh, stop the laws of this president in essence, and lays out certain things regarding the Affordable Care Act and immigration. He also references Senator Ted Cruz in this clip. Senator Cruz called the presidency of President Obama an imperial presidency. Here is his response to Congress's claims and the resolution known as the stop resolution. Roll it. Ted Cruz of Texas, who president calls this the imperial presidency. And in the House, there is this thing, as you know, called the Stop Act. They want to rein in what you're trying to do. Uh, how do you respond to that? Well, I don't think that's very serious. I'm, the truth of the matter is, is that every president uh, engages in executive action. In fact, uh, we've been very disciplined and uh, sparing in terms of the executive actions that we've taken. Uh, we make sure that we're doing it within the authority that we have uh, under statute. But uh, I'm not going to make an apology for saying that if I can help middle class families and folks who are working hard to try to get in the middle class do a little bit better, then I'm going to do it. And you know, I think it's, it's a tough argument for the other side to make that not only are they willing to do any, uh, uh, not do anything, but they also want me not to do anything. Uh, in which case, uh, I think the American people, uh, uh, whose right now estimation of Congress is already pretty low, uh, might, uh, might have an even lower opinion on it. The STOP Act is not something you take seriously? I, I'm not particularly worried about it. Yeah, gr yeah great follow-up. I'm sorry, I'm just disappointed in Tapper. I'll get to that a little later. The president using the power of the pen. Remember this clip earlier from Robert Gibbs this week talking about how the president has really given up on changing, changing Washington. It's very telling. It's cut number 40, and Robert Gibbs, former White House spokesperson, and that would be like Jay Carney. Okay, so that's who's making this statement. was asked by Willie Geist on Morning Joe. Roll it. I'm feeling about the country right now. I mean, 
This is a guy who came in five years ago saying change comes from outside Washington. We're going to break the fever. We're going to change the way Washington does business. We're going to get things done. And he's learned some pretty hard lessons in how Washington actually works or doesn't work. Well, I think, uh, you know, the 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 ability to change Washington, I think, is something that uh, that long ago uh, the White House sort of stopped trying to do and, and whether or not that's a good thing we'll look back on history. I Please get cut number three ready, mistyped by me. And cut number three is Charles Krauthammer speaking to what the president has done through executive order, including his own Dream Act. And he made a statement that I, I, I think the doctor listens to the show and I'm honored by it. But here's what he had to say. Roll it. Look, the, 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 right, you can have executive orders that implement already existing laws. What Obama has done in the DREAM Act, which is exactly what you've talked about, where right. he essentially he passed a law by executive order that the Congress had rejected, it wouldn't pass. That is unbelievably unconstitutional. It's as if a Republican ran and said, I don't like the, the, the capital gains tax. Congress rejects an abolition of that tax, and then he orders the IRS not to collect it. People would be up in arms and would be impeaching. He's done that over and over again on immigration, climate on change, drug laws, climate change, and of course on Obamacare, which he has unilaterally altered uh, uh, lawlessly at least 15 times. The doctor is right, and the judge is right when it comes to the president overstepping. That's why I was somewhat disappointed in the follow-ups from Jake Tapper and recognizing that hindsight's 2020, and Jake Tapper is an incredible journalist that I have a great deal of respect for. I also have a great deal of respect for our upcoming guest, who also is an incredible journalist. His name is Chris Woodward, and he's going to be with us on the flip side. And we're going to break down more of the interview with Jake Tap Tap Tapperu and the president. We're also going to ask, I'm going to ask Chris, why is Jon Stewart a better interviewer and at times elements of journalism, journalism and journalists than people that have the job and that is their sole responsibility? And Jon Stewart's a comedian and a commentator. Why does he do a better job of pressing politicians and seemingly is at times more informed than the White House press corps? Pretty good question. I bet you want to hear the answer. Well, Chris Woodward will answer it. He is the business environment reporter for OneNewsNow.com and American Family News. My name is Crane Durham. This is the Friday edition of Nothing But Truth, probably on AFR Talk. <laughs>